We are faced with a paradigm shift where our increased use of energy and the acute need to cut down CO2 emissions seem contradictory. Green energy is taking over, but is it happening fast enough? Renewable energy production has the capacity to be scaled enough to support our energy needs. But it has a downside, which slows down the rollout of renewables, and that is our electricity grids are real-time systems. They can't store energy, which means that all the energy that we produce must be consumed in exact accordance. Mine storage has a solution that can be a true enabler of a green energy transition. To reach the climate goals, we need to reach a zero carbon grid by 2050. At the same time, we need to accommodate a massive increase in electricity consumption. Nearly 30% of our CO2 emissions come from fossil-based electricity production. In other words, renewable energy production has never been more important. A zero carbon grid is only possible if we have energy storages, where each megawatt of storage can enable renewables to replace fossil-based energy production. Our energy consumption patterns are obviously different from the wind and the sun, and that creates imbalances. There's two daily peaks of electricity consumption, one in the morning and one in the evening when everyone comes home and charges their electric vehicles, cooks dinner, hoovers and so on. And both production capacity and grid restraints make these peak hours one of the most pressing issues to solve. By 2050, the electrification of industries and transport will increase our electricity consumption by nearly 60%. We have only seen the beginning of wind, solar and other weather-dependent renewables. Wind production needs to increase by more than 10 times in the next 30 years. Unless we add grid-scale energy storage, we will prohibit the growth of renewables and our ability to save the planet. In other words, the grid-scale energy storage is the key that unlocks the green energy transition. When comparing energy storages, there is a difference between applications. There are several technologies that can be used, but the three most often mentioned when speaking about grid-scale storage are lithium-ion batteries, hydrogen and pumped water. Lithium-ion batteries have a quick response time and are great for small spaces, such as cars or mobile phones. The demand from the EV industry is actually so high that we are seeing a lack of lithium reserves in the near future. When building large battery packs to serve as energy storage is to the grid, the volume of storage is completely dependent on adding more batteries, which means they are less suitable when power will be needed for several hours at a time. Also, since batteries have limited charge cycles, they quickly become an expensive alternative per megawatt in grid-scale applications. Lithium-ion can also have a higher climate impact since they need rare earth metals. The power-to-gas technology that's now being developed on a broad scale shows a huge potential as an alternative to fuels like diesel and petrol. By converting electricity to hydrogen, it becomes transportable. And that's going to be a game changer for industries like the shipping industry. Also, initiatives to carbonize steel production by replacing coal with hydrogen also has a big potential. And that kind of volume will only be possible if the energy that will be used to produce the hydrogen comes from renewables. And that's obviously going to drive the need for renewables even further. If there would be an overproduction of hydrogen, it could theoretically be used to reproduce electricity but that's going to be at a round-trip efficiency of less than 50%. The most commonly used technology for energy storage is water-based energy storage, known as pumped storage hydro. Actually, over 90% of all global energy is stored by pumped storage. The technology has been around for more than 100 years. And maybe more importantly, it's exceptionally easy to increase the amount of stored energy. You simply add more water. There's two types of pump storage. Both use water and gravity as the two main components. Traditional pump storage is found in mountain areas where water is kept at two different elevations. And the energy is stored by pumping water from the lower dam up to the upper dam. 
Likewise, energy is released when water from the upper dam flows through turbines down to the lower dam. The downside of traditional pumped storage is that most current storage plants are designed for longer duration storage. Because of that, they're not able to balance the grid. This requires new technology with quicker response times so that the energy storage constantly can be online and support the grid with a lot of renewable energy. Apart from complicated permit processes, they also require natural height differences, which greatly limits the solution's ability to handle the vast global need for energy storage. Mine storage is the underground version of pump storage hydro. It relies on the same basic principle of moving water between two reservoirs. It too can store large quantities of energy and is highly suitable to support the grid both with energy storage and with balancing services. The main difference is that the lower water reservoir is below ground in a closed mine. Introducing water-based energy storage to the energy system adds stability to the grid and allows for a faster rollout of renewables. Since there are more than one million mines in the world, mine storage is potentially the fastest way to net zero emissions and a stable energy system. It's not the energy storage as such that's important, but what it enables in the energy system. A mine storage is beautiful in its simplicity. It uses the cleanest means of storage, water, and the most reliable force, gravity. Mine storage contributes directly to several of the Paris Agreement's sustainable development goals, such as enabling renewable energy, ensuring jobs and economic growth, and driving climate action. Also, converting a closed mine into mine storage makes the mine itself a circular asset. Instead of being a financial environmental liability, it can drive regional employment and prosperity. We apply well-proven state-of-the-art hydropower technology in a new setting, underground mines. For every mine storage, we form a separate company called an SPV, Special Purpose Vehicle. This means we build a portfolio of installations. We have a flexible approach towards the product financing in each specific project. This means we foresee different partners from case to case. Typical partners are mining companies, energy companies and institutional investors. Mine storage does not depend on any product or own technology. Instead, we build company value in, of course, the SPVs, but also very important, we build IP through our innovation, competence and ability to assess both markets and sites and by combining those into profitable business cases. All this knowledge, best practice and software tools are gathered in what we call Mind Storage Wow. That is our own way of working. We organize our work into four phases, qualification, development, construction and operation. Each phase includes many different work packages and disciplines. You can say that MindStorage WOW industrialized our work and that secures quality, efficiency and allows us to scale up fast. To give you one example, there are like one million mines around the world. This means during the qualification phase we must use a very systematic approach for screening. It includes assessment of the market, rights and regulation, infrastructure, the mine itself and the site and overall the commercial viability. A vital part of qualifying a project is making sure that it can be operated in a financially sustainable way. The evaluation starts with analyzing the local energy markets and the revenue potential. This generates the functional demands and the technical design for a mine storage. Altogether, these forms the input for the operational strategy. There are different revenue models depending on the market that can be combined energy trading, balancing services, behind the meter solutions, and capacity reserve. According to UN's climate IPCC, a 24,000 billion US dollar investment in energy will be needed to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2035. In order to keep global warming below 2 degrees Celsius, the world needs 266 gigawatts of energy storage by 2030. Under current trends, Bloomberg New Energy Finance predicts that 660 billion will be invested into energy storage over the next two decades. In other words, we need to act now. 
by using state-of-the-art hydropower technology that responds quickly enough to help balance the grids, mine storage can be a true enabler of the green transition. By balancing wind production, each megawatt of a mine storage can help avoid yearly emissions of 88,000 tonnes of CO2. This means that 80 medium-sized mine storages can save 1% of the global CO2 emissions.